you are about to hear Earl Nightingale, who some called the Dean of Personal Development. He is going to teach you how you can have anything you want. This is part two of a three-part series. I hope this changes your life as profoundly as it did mine many years ago. And I hope it opens the door for you getting everything you want. Now, here is Earl. Of all the billions of human beings who've lived on Earth, all great advances, all great ideas have come from just a handful, a few thousand out of billions. Now, how have the people as a group reacted to the great ideas? Every great leader and thinker from Socrates to the Wright brothers has been scorned, ridiculed, poisoned, imprisoned, stoned, pilloried, burned at the stake, or crucified. Mankind as a group has made a consistently grisly game of tormenting his saviors. Why? Lack of information. Lack of knowledge. It comes from following the wrong crowd. What can we learn from all this as individuals? Two things. One. To amount to anything as individuals, we've got to be individuals. We've got to have individual goals, individual thinking, individual action. And two, we must never conform to the great mass of people. We must love them, help them, for our joy and success will be determined by the extent to which we serve them. But we must never lose our individuality and identity by permitting ourselves to be submerged in this suffocating sea of indirection and purposelessness. There's nothing wrong with emulation. In fact, it's a good idea. So long as we emulate a person who represents that which we wish to become, but never the crowd, never the 95%. We are what we think about. Our minds, our thinking controls our destinies here on earth to a degree totally unsuspected by the great majority of people. When you think about it a moment, it becomes so obvious, so clear and simple. Well then, if we become what we think about, and if we can control our minds, we can pretty well tell our own future. And that's the point I want to make. That's what I meant when I said earlier that each one of us is the architect of the structure fashioned by our years. This means that if we're confused about what we wish to become or accomplish, our lives, our environment will mirror that confusion. It also means that if we know what it is we seek, that it will, it must be accomplished. Barring an act of God or a catastrophe over which we have no control, we as individuals can call our own shots for the rest of our lives. We can know what it means to go through life from one success to another, to play life according to the rules and reap the rewards. We can know what it means to have peace of mind and live calm, cheerful, successful lives. You are at this moment the sum total of your thoughts to this point, for there is nothing else you can be. And five years from now, you can be and have anything you set your entire mind and heart upon. Succeeding in life has always been a matter of doing that which the great majority does not do. Now let's keep this in mind as we get into this business of goals. It isn't that I want to make an invidious comparison between the 5% and the 95%, not at all. That's just the way it is. And if we don't recognize it, it will be to our cost. At the beginning of this record, I made the statement, if you can tell me what you want, I can tell you how to get it. You see, the trick is not in achieving our goals, it is in establishing them. A ship would never leave a harbor if it did not have a destination. An industrial plant would never open its gates if it did not have a product or a purpose. Football would not be played without goal posts, nor would baseball without a home plate. Every business operates for a purpose, every game has a reason. Getting back to the analogy of our ship, if you were to climb to the navigation bridge and ask the captain the name and location of his next port of call, he would tell you immediately. There's not the slightest doubt in his mind. Can you tell anyone your destination just as quickly and in one sentence? The captain of the ship knows that he can arrive at only one port at a time. He knows that it's impossible to arrive at two. Do you know that? He also knows that his destination will be invisible for fully 99% of his voyage, but he knows it's there and that he'll reach it, barring an unforeseen catastrophe, if he will just keep doing certain things a certain way every day. 
One fine morning, his destination will appear on the horizon. He'll sail into port, his voyage successfully completed. When his business has been accomplished, he'll then sail to another predetermined port of call, and this will take him and his ship from one success to another for the rest of both of their lives. By understanding that he can reach only one port at a time, the owner of a ship can, in the short space of a very few years, reach hundreds of ports successfully. There'll be problems, lots of them, but they'll be solved, and the ship will steam its solitary course over the deep oceans of the world, devoting its life to accomplishing its mission and contributing its share to the welfare and economy of the world. Men and women who follow this sensible, obvious, and meaningful way of life will do the same. But the paradox is that most are like ships without rudders. They're subject to the whims of wind and tide. And while they hope they'll one day arrive in a rich and bustling port, you and I know that for every narrow harbor entrance, there's a thousand miles of treacherous and rocky coastline. The chances of their just drifting into port are a thousand to one against them. These are the unfortunate people who, not knowing the rules, believe that circumstance controls our lives. They believe in luck and superstition, fate, the breaks. They believe that success comes as a result of who you know, not what you know. And while they cling to their false alibis, life passes them by. For the rules of life are just, and they are checkmated, without haste, but without remorse. Now what about you? Remembering that the definition of success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal, what's the ideal toward which you are working now, today, yesterday, and tomorrow? Can you write it in one sentence? Is your goal sharply and clearly defined? I mentioned on the first side of this record that I could tell you how you could be and have anything you set your mind on in five years. To better understand this, you must examine one of the most overlooked facts in the world. It is that every job, no matter what it may be, holds somewhere within itself the key to everything we want in life, the key to greatness. But we must look for it, and we must think. Decide to become a professional at your business. You see, we can either compete or create. If we compete with all the other people in our line of work, we must be willing to accept the same rewards. If that's what we want, fine. But if we want to become professionals at what we do, then we must create. And when we begin to do this, there's no limit to that which we can achieve. We hear a lot these days about a word called security. Everyone wants security, but not one in ten can tell you what it is. Most people will tell you that security rests with a job. This is impossible. There is no such thing as a job that represents security. Anyone with a job can lose it for any one of a thousand reasons at any time. There is only one place on earth you can find security, and if it isn't there, it isn't anywhere. It's inside of a person, never outside. If a man has security inside where it belongs, his wife and children can feel it when he sits down to eat with them, and they're warmed by it. If a man has security inside where it belongs, you can see it walking down the street, and you can feel it when he enters a room. That's security, and you can't take it away from him. You can take away his money, his home, everything but a wife who's willing to start over, and most of them are, and drop him anywhere in the country. Go back in a year and he'll be doing just as well as when you found him the first time. You can't keep a good man down, no matter what you do to him. Like cream on milk, you can shake it all day, but just set it down for a while and it'll bounce right to the top again. This man or this woman has security where it belongs. And do you know where it comes from? It comes from doing what we do for a living surpassingly well. It comes from being a pro in a world of amateurs. Thanks for listening and watching. Share this video with someone you care about. Help us inspire one million people to get past their give up point and win with these quotes and stories of inspiration. Click the like and subscribe buttons. Also click the bell icon so you are notified of new content. Consider becoming a Patreon. Your donation monthly can help us inspire millions of people around the world. Link is below in the description. Now, here are a few more videos that will definitely inspire you to win.